Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about um, the kind of beginning of Earth's history in geologic time. Um, so go ahead and open your notes to page 10. We're going to do 8.7 Precambrian time notes. So first of all, the Earth is about 4.6 billion years old, which is super duper old. It's been around for a really, really long time. Um, but as it has been around for a really long time, it has also changed a lot um, in these last 4.6 billion years. The very first chunk, though, of big major geologic time um, in Earth's history is called the Precambrian time. It actually takes up, it's the longest chunk of time in Earth's history, and it takes up most, about 88% of Earth's history. Um, it starts at the beginning of Earth being created, and then ended with a global ice age about 544 million years ago. Um, that's a huge, huge chunk of time. It's billions of years, and you would probably think like tons of things have happened. Um, but in billions of years, just some very basic things happen. Now, those basic things, about five of them, I think, um, basic things actually are huge events that life as we know out here on Earth would not be the way it is now without these events. So some of those things are things like uh, the creation of the sun, creation of the Earth itself, um, creation of the oceans and the continents that we have, um, the atmosphere that we breathe, um, and eventually actually life on Earth started billions of years ago. So during the first several hundred million years of the Precambrian time, um, we got things like the atmosphere, oceans, continents beginning to form here on Earth. Um, but billions of years ago, like our, we had a first atmosphere that was kind of a lot different than what it is now. Um, so our first atmosphere was kind of developed at the same time the Earth was being developed and there was volcanoes all over exploding and releasing all sorts of toxic gases. Um, and so the gases that the atmosphere was composed of were a lot different uh, billions of years ago than they are now today. The surface of the Earth has also changed a lot over time um, due to continental drift. I know that in sixth grade, you talked about um, continental drift and plate tectonics, so you have a little bit of background information in that. Um, but basically, our land masses that we call continents, um, they actually drift or move over Earth's surface, and they move really, really slowly. Uh, we have evidence of this because we see it in the rocks. We see We have fossil evidence. We can see how these continents kind of puzzle piece themselves together. Um, I know you've talked about Pangaea, the big supercontinent, when all the continents were once one big continent. Um, and because we see fossils of different organisms like plants and animals and they're in different climates, we, know, we have some evidence that these things have changed over time. Um, new continents have been formed when we have two different land masses that crash together or they break apart. Um, so the surface of the earth over billions of years has also changed a lot. Um, some of the oldest fossils that we have are one-celled organisms from three and a half billion years ago. So life on Earth has been here for at least three and a half billion years ago. Um, these early life forms are very simple, things like bacteria, things like algae, um, some towards the end of the Precambrian time, uh, jellyfish and some like sea worms. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of fossil evidence of things like jellyfish and sea worms because they're soft-bodied creatures. We know that when you make uh, fossils, you have to have a lot of hard pieces like um, shells and bones and stuff that fossilize well. Um, but we do have some one-celled organisms in the fossil evidence of like three and a half billion years ago. Um, some of these very beginning early life forms um, kind of changed our Earth in ways for the good that allow life on Earth to be the way it is now. Oops. <laughs> Just kidding. Here we go. Ew. There we go. So, uh, life develops about, uh, sorry, I had to make sure I was still recording. <laughs> life developed, um, like I said, three and a half billion years ago. Some of our early life organisms um, actually underwent the process of photosynthesis that I know you're familiar with. Um, so they were able to make food for themselves. They were autotrophs or producers. Um, one other really important thing about the process of photosynthesis is that it creates a very special gas that we need to breathe called oxygen. So without some of these really early bacteria and algae that were in the oceans, um, we would not have the atmosphere that we do today that is oxygen rich. Eventually, um, as our atmosphere is changing and Earth is changing with these early organisms, um, the ozone layer developed. So a little uh, 
review on the ozone layer. It's part of the atmosphere. And the ozone layer is important because the sun has super, super strong ultraviolet rays. Um, they can be harmful to living organisms if you get too much of them. So the ozone layer actually protects us for some of those really, really hard, um, really, really harmful uh, rays and stuff like that. So um, as you can see, our Earth has changed over a lot. This is just the very first chunk called Precambrian time. You have some other eras that you'll learn about next time. Um, but during this Precambrian time, some major, major events happened and allow Earth to be the way it is today. Um, so that's a quick little lesson on Precambrian time. You have an activity to do. So go ahead and flip to page 12 in your notes. You are going to do the trackway inference and observation activity. I'm not going to say a whole lot about that picture, but you need to take a look at that picture. It appears to be some footprints of some organisms. Um, you are going to make three observations about the picture. Remember, observations are things that you notice. You can see, you can observe three things that you notice about it, and then you're being asked to make one inference or a conclusion. What could you say based on what you see? Um, remember that with geologic history, what we know, nobody was there to see it, so what we know is based on fossil evidence and rock layers. So scientists have gone out and they are able to look at fossils, um, trace fossils, things of that nature, um, and kind of make an inference or a conclusion or a best guess about what may have been going on about animals' activities, where they lived, what who they um, hunted or what they ate. So go ahead and pretend to be a little geologist for a minute. Make three observations and one inference or conclusion about what you see. Good luck, and I will see you next time.